Welcome to another edition of the House Whisperer Show on WWDB Talk 860. I'm Barry Reisman, inviting you to stay tuned for expert advice about maintaining your house from the roof to the basement, featuring professional home inspector Jack Milne. And Jack, hello, welcome back to WWDB. Yeah, thank you, Barry. And um, as I signed off last time, Happy New Year to everybody, and I hope that 2014 uh, is what everyone expects it to be. Anytime that we have time to reflect on what happened last year, sometimes it makes the new year a little bit more exciting and expressive. So let's keep our fingers crossed that we have a good real estate market, that uh, our politicians can maybe finally start to work together. That would be nice. And, um, you know, that we, you know, that we have a good and happy and healthy year. So my best to everybody. Well, as everybody knows, uh, you know, the House Whisperer Show is, is really dedicated to homeowners, home buyers, and anyone who needs a little bit of uh, assistance maintaining the home. And so the old moral is where every house has a story. And so I, I thought this week we would do something on outbuildings and basically how to prepare, because it's not just as easy as just going out and buying a structure and plunking it on the ground, although it does seem to be that easy. There's a lot of background that has to go into uh, making the, uh, the appropriate one purchase and two, the locations critical, because once you put it down, it's hard to move it again. So before we kick in, let's thank the sponsors, because again, without them, I wouldn't be able to get, be on the air to, for you to listen to me today. So let's start with Pest Blaster. Um, let's give, uh, e well, let's do websites. I like websites because I think this is how most people are finding out their research. So Pest Blaster is literally pestblaster.com. They, they cover radon, mold, wood destroying insects, as well as pest removal. Burrow Exterminating, which is burrowexterminating.com. I like when websites are easy because they're easy to remember. Again, they do termite as well as radon testing. Buxmont Inspections, uh, literally buxmontinspections.com. Boy, it's, it's easy today, Barry. They're all just rolling out. But, again, on-site sewage evaluations and as well as design. Um, so if you need any assistance, uh, reach out to Rob Bowie. Uh, BrainFlushGear.com, that one's as simple as, as they come. And, again, they do uh, any type of active um, uh, wear, be it T-shirts, hoodies, sweatshirts. Um, if you've got something that needs imprinting, they can do it. And, of course, Tri-County Inspection Company, where our website is tcinspect.com. Um, and, by the way, if, if you do contact them, let them know that you, you heard their ads on, on the House Whisperer show. It's a good way for them to monitor how well their advertising dollars are being spent. So, uh, email box, Ken. Um, Jack, you did my inspection three weeks ago and um, spent good time talking about switching out my oil furnace to propane. You mentioned you did a show on the topic, and, and yesterday I listened to it. Um, and it gave me an opportunity to, to once again listen to your reasons, and it seemed to make a lot more sense. So thanks for the inspection, and thanks for the advice. So, folks, if you need me, please reach out to my uh, email at thehousewhisperershow at gmail.com and for previous episodes, thehousewhisperershow.com direct. Uh, also, as I'd like um, to mention, if you miss me on any given Sunday, please visit the podcast at www.dbam.com. So enough of all that stuff. Let's move right into the topic, which is outbuildings and uh, basically how to prepare. So really, first things first, what you have to do is, is visit your local municipality because there's going to be certain code requirements uh, before you can put an additional structure on your property. Now, it seems like in most municipalities, if you're going to do a shed, uh, you need to be about 10 feet off each corner. Uh, so if, if you have a rectangular lot, you want to put the, the, the shed in the back right corner, well, you got to take your tape measure and measure 10 feet in and 10 feet out. And then, you know, dr and then I tell clients, drop a stake, because then that would uh, initiate your corner. That would be the closest uh, to your property. 
The other thing you have to look into, and this is very important, is something that we call impervious surface ratios. Now, what that means is that uh, your, your land has to be able to absorb so much water. So, um, for example, where I live in Lower Makefield, when I put my garage up, I had to have an impervious surface ratio of 18%. In other words, 18% um, uh, of the dwellings in my garage, uh, that was it. I, I couldn't have any, any more buildings after that point. And you know what, folks, it's not 18%, it's 17.9%. So this allows, um, let's, let's round it to 20. That means 80% of your land can still absorb water, while 20% uh, can be impervious. Now, impervious surfaces also include driveways, sidewalks, uh, decks. Believe it or not, a deck uh, is considered impervious, but only by a ratio. So approximately a third of the water will dissipate past the deck, but two-thirds gets absorbed by the wood or uh, other materials. Um, believe it or not, a pool uh, is considered impervious. Even though it, it holds water, it doesn't allow for the dissipation of water. Um, hardscapes today, we're looking at a lot of E.P. Henry pavers or similar products, uh, uh, concrete patios. All these items I'm suggesting um, in, add up onto your impervious uh, surface ratio. So uh, sheds, you know, if you're a 10 by uh, 15 shed, that's 150 square feet. Uh, it may not seem a lot, but again, by the time that you add up all these numbers, they may only allow you to do a 10 by 10 shed instead of a 10 by 15. So. I think that's one of the most important things that you have to look at um, before you go shopping for your shed. And I'm going to break today's show, Barry, basically into two sections. So we're going to do sheds first, and then we're going to do garages second. So um, another item is that if you live in a community that has a homeowners association, I would suggest you do the following. Number one is read the association rules to determine your responsibilities versus those of the association. And you know what, guys? It's going to be probably 80 pages of the most boring stuff that you've ever come across. Um, so, um, you know, take, take a, uh, a, a stimulant, drink extra coffee if you have to, but try to stay awake as you read it uh, because these are the guidelines of which you have to do certain things. And believe me, it could make a difference. And why is that? First off, associations actually have the power to determine the size of the building or shed. They may also determine color choices because they may not want um, a blue shed when all the houses around it are yellow. And that's just an example, but there's a lot of weight to that. Uh, they will also determine location as to where it will fit. And again, this has a lot to do with the size of the shed of which you're, you're, you're looking to, to, to buy. Building style. For example, a lot of our shed roofs have gable roofs or hip roofs, front entries, side entries. And again, they may determine exactly what they will allow on your property, even though you own the property. Next is, you know, should we do a concrete pad or, or should we sit it on concrete blocks? Um, certain homeowners requ uh, requirements say they want it on concrete blocks because it's not determined to be permanent. Once you put down a concrete pad, it is considered permanent. So, um, again, very good information. Um, and if you have to put it on concrete block, uh, don't forget the lattice to keep the critters out. Um, because believe me, especially around this time of year, uh, they love to hide under there where it's private and dark, uh, plus it's out of sight. So, you know, screening, lattice, something to allow airflow in, but keep the critters out. So, you know, once you get all this information, then you can finally come to the decision. So the next decision is, should we do a shed or a garage? Well, basically, you know, sheds, I feel, are used for the overflow of stuff. So 
if you're in a townhouse, you may not be able to do the garage, but you may be able to do the shed because what do you want to put in the shed? You want to put in all the kids' stuff so you get your garage back. That's how I see it anyway. But my father-in-law has some great advice. He goes, whatever size you think you need, go bigger. Okay, so in other words, you know, oh, honey, a 10 by 10 will be perfect. Go 10 by 12, go 10 by 15. Uh, because all of a sudden, that once you realize how much stuff that you're trying to pull out of the garage and put into the shed, all of a sudden the shed could be overflowing, and you won't be able to close the door. So, you know, again, survey your stuff and the type of stuff. Um, some of the things I'm thinking about is pool equipment, summer chairs and tables, lawnmower, the tractor, the wheelbarrow. Different things have different needs. And, and mostly all are bulky. So, once again, an 8x10 may not cut it, but a 10x12 may. Well, on that, that note, Jack, uh, why don't we just take a quick break? Uh, all, always fascinating information, and uh, today is no exception. So, stand by, Jack. Uh, you're listening to The House Whisperer here at WW. DB Talk 860. Jack Milne is the house whisperer. And uh, don't miss any of the shows because uh, there is so much good advice and so much good information that you don't want to miss a minute of it. Uh, Jack, we'll be right back right after this. Oro Exterminating has been specializing in wood destroying insect inspection and control for over 40 years, serving Philadelphia and the surrounding counties. All inspectors are state certified and ensure providing their clients with professional inspections and treatments. Oro not only performs conventional termite treatments, but also handles special services like historic buildings and homes with wells, creeks, or ponds. The client is assured that all treatments will be performed safely when you hire Boro to do the work. They also provide radon testing in their service area. Boro's full-time office staff is available to help you schedule an appointment. Just call 610-586-586. 5640 or send an email request to boroughinspects at verizon.net that's 610-586-5640 or email at boroughinspects at verizon.net specially created t-shirts by brainflushgear.com offer the extreme sports enthusiast an opportunity to have a clothing line available that suits their sport brainflushgear.com understands that when we get the moment where we can jump on our motorcycles wave runners surfboards snowmobiles or skateboards it can be priceless they offer custom artwork including silk screening transfers and embroidery speak to one of their consultants today and they'll help you create your own brain flush visit brainflushgear.com or email them at contact at brainflushgear.com for your septic inspection and testing needs, please consider Bucksmont Inspections. They've been serving the Bucks and Montgomery County areas for over 15 years. As members of the Pennsylvania Septage Management Association, the Pennsylvania Association of Sewage Enforcement Officers, and the Pennsylvania Association for Professional Soil Scientists, Bucksmont Inspections can inspect your existing septic system or test for your new septic system placement. Please call Rob Bowie at 215-66. 4213 and say you heard their ad on the House Whisperer show. As the weather gets cooler and the temperatures drop, the bugs might slow down, but the rodents don't stop. Mice and rats begin to invade homes during the fall and winter months looking for food, warmth, and a comfortable place to nest. Don't wait for pesky rodents to invade your home. Fight back. Have your home baited and ready for their attack with Pest Blaster. Whether preventative or a full-blown infestation, give Pest Blaster a call at 215-295-5555 and they can discuss the solution to your problem. They also offer humane animal removal services for a wide variety of wild animals, damage repairs, and cleanups. Call them today at 215-295-5555 or check them out at PestBlaster.com. Servicing both New Jersey and Pennsylvania. Pest Blaster, 215-295-5555 or PestBlaster.com for all your pest control needs. 
Tri-County Inspection Company has been providing professional home inspections, commercial inspections, and historic property evaluations for over 25 years. Tri-County Inspection Company covers 13 counties serving both New Jersey and Pennsylvania. They've performed inspections for over 70,000 clients and are members of the American Society of Home Inspectors as well as the Pennsylvania Home Inspectors Coalition. They are licensed in both Philadelphia and New Jersey. For all of your real estate trends, Transactions. Call Tri-County Inspections at 215-295-2030. For their New Jersey clientele, call 856-853-4224. In PA, call 215-295-2030. In New Jersey, 856-853-4224. back once again with Jack Milne, the house whisperer, who is here every week at this time dispensing uh, invaluable advice. And Jack, uh, let, let's, uh, let's hear more about uh, today's topic. Well, thank you, Barry. As the old saying goes, sometimes size matters. So before we went to the station break, um, we we're talking 8 by 10s versus a 10 by 12 shed. Now, of course, one is 80 square feet versus 120 square feet, but think about it. The 120 square feet is a third larger, and costs are similar. Um, The next point, do you want to build the the shed yourself or have it dropped off? I mean, personally, I like to build myself. You have a choice of materials from sodding to roofing. You know, you can determine if you want the concrete floor, which is a far better um, and stable surface than a wood floor. And once again, I think of critters. So uh, you're not going to get critters with a concrete pad, but almost guaranteed to get critters if you build it on block. Um, The door styles are your own. You know, if you like a barn style, an overhead door like a garage. You know, and I like to have another overhead door on the other side of the shed. So in other words, you're coming and going. So if you have that garden tractor and you want to pull it in, uh, sometimes it's easier to just pull right on through than back it out. So, again, food for thought. The side entry door is good for what I call general entry. Uh, so that could be a standard 2, 6, or 3 o door. And then you can over, uh, open up the barn-style doors from inside or whatever you choose on the ends. Uh, but everything should be planned out and easy to do with – and it's – I'm sorry. And it's easy to do with graph uh, paper and a ruler. The roof pitch. The higher the pitch uh, will allow for more storage under the roof. Now, it may be small, but so what? You know, it's, it's just another space to, to take advantage of. Uh, do you want electric? I mean, I think you should. An overhead light and a few receptacles, I don't think you can beat that. You know, and it, 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 it may, you may not be able to do it, because it's a shed, but that's, again, where our codes uh, come in mind. But if you can, it's a great move. As to the drop-off type, um, you know, again, they run about the same cost or maybe a little bit more than something you build yourself because someone ha- else has to do all the work. And they do tend to be cookie cutters. You know, you can go to their location. You can pick out the one you like. Uh, they put it on a truck, and you show them where to put it. So you may not have very many options, um, you know, if, if, if you're going to the to lot and pick it out on your own. Plus, I find that the construction of the drop-offs is not as good as something that you built yourself. Uh, keep in mind that some of these come in pieces, um, and, and especially when you have locations that are tight for drop-off. And, and I kind of think of the Toll Brothers, uh, general, you know, uh, building contractors where, you know, their homes get delivered on a flatbed. So it may be the same scenario if you have uh, tall trees, um, you have fencing, uh, and everything else. So it might be uh, literally putting together pieces of the puzzle um, so that you can put your shed where you need it. Now, you may also be able to pick shingle color and siding color, too. 
Um, you may want to ask about electrical options, uh, and I'm sure that's not included. Uh, windows and doors are upgrades, but you know, th once again, think access and use. And the old motto for me is do it once and, and do it right. Now, phase two of our discussion is going to be on garages. And I think a good definition between a shed and a garage is a garage is a larger shed. Um, it sounds a little bit redundant, but there's a lot of truth to that. Now, impervious service ratios play a much larger role with a garage. And single-car garages, folks, anything less than 12 by 22 is actually going to be a little bit too small. Now, that's 264 square feet. Um, garage doors are 7 feet wide um, and 8 feet tall. So, um, so you're going to need another door to swing in for the cars. So, again, don't forget. Um, so you have, you have to have more egress. Uh, to, to get by so you can get yourself by without damaging yourself or your vehicles. Two-car garages are roughly 22 feet deep and 20 feet wide. So you have to think of either two 7x8 uh, garage doors or a single 16-foot garage door uh, plus space between the cars. So remember, you've got to be able to get in your car and out of your car safely without hitting your, your partner's car. And you know what, if that happens, that just leads to arguments. So if you're going to plan for pull-down stairs for storage, again, try to put it in a space that doesn't disrupt the placement of the vehicles. Um, because, again, this becomes the place to store, so it's not over your house. So careful planning with the contractor will allow you to uh, you know, put some plywood up over top of your joist and then get the stuff out of your house attic and put it over the garage. As to electric for a garage, uh, you can install either a 40 or a 60 amp sub panel so that you may want to consider electric baseboard heat or all the power tools you want. And of course, if, you, if you're going to heat it, you better insulate it. And why not? Because insulation is cheap and effective. Um, and especially if you want to run a, a, a hose bib. Uh, you know, to wash your car by your new detached garage. So, again, a lot of thought has to go into this. Also, you will absolutely need a permit. You, can, you might be able to hide a shed, but you may never be able to hide a garage. And you also need a good general contractor. So your township is going to also require building plans, too. Uh, I know they required one of my garage when I built it in 1991. So they want to see elevations. They want to see what it's going to look like. There may also be uh, code restrictions or zoning restrictions. For example, when I built mine, they, I had to put something on my deed that says I was not going to turn it into an apartment. Uh, so I had no problem filling out that piece of document. Um, as far as the township, a visitor from the township will want to verify the following. First off, proper footings and depth. So um, garages are a lot heavier than sheds, so we have to have the appropriate footings. They're, they're going to want a framing inspection just to make sure all the bones are installed properly uh, before you put uh, your siding finishes on and roofing finishes. Of course, if you're going to do electrical, you need an electrical inspection. And then you're going to need a final inspection. Plus, because you got a permit, you're going to be lucky because you get an increase in your taxes. So once you go to a garage, yeah, man, you're going to be paying the township or the state or whoever just a little bit more money. Uh, I know my taxes went up about $300 a year when I built my garage. Uh, but i got to tell you, folks, it's worth every cent. You know, if it cost me a buck a day or less than that, um, I've had it now 15 years, 16 years, and I, and I love it. So to all you guys, here are the benefits. Number one, you can finally put your car away. Number two, all the kid stuff does not go in your garage. As I always like to say, the wife may run the house, but I run the garage. Uh, <laughs> so four Fourth, it's a place to hide with a project when the mother-in-law shows up. And I've used that excuse a ton of times, especially right now with the holidays. So I can go out, and I always have an annual project right around this time of year that I can get out of the house. Uh, five, absolutely improves property value. And I think that's one of the few things 
uh, that when you improve your property, if you put a garage up, you almost get every cent back out of that. Six, it cuts down on the amount of grass you have to cut, you know, uh, and especially when the birds of the fillies are on. So um, it gets your, your lawn jobs done a lot faster. Seven, you can hang out with all those college uh, posters that have been in storage over 20 years. Uh, so it gets uh, some of those collectibles uh, back on the walls where you can um, enjoy them all over again. One thing I like to do is crank the tunes as loud as you want. You can close the garage door down, work on your vehicle, and, and uh, put the music on that you enjoy. Uh, eight, as you may now know, I have a detached garage, and I love it. Nine, today's costs. A one-car garage, roughly ten to 15000 A two-car garage, between eighteen to 25000 But it, it really does depend on the size. And keep in mind, there's going to be some landscaping techniques that you're going to want to do. You also have some of the other things to consider, like uh, driveway extensions. I know when I built my garage, because of my impervious surface ratio, I had to put a stone bed down. Uh, between my existing driveway and, and my back garage. And unfortunately, we are just about out of time. Well, okay. Um, well, before we depart next week, uh, we do have the el elusive Jim McKissick uh, on the air. You've heard his name over the past several weeks. And, yep. Uh, but I think I've got him finally nailed down. Um, so we're going to have him on next week talking about appraisal. So as it is Sunday, folks, please spend time with friends and family. And I look forward to seeing you next week on The House Whisper. Hey, this has been a fascinating program. I never knew there was so much to know about, about garages and sheds and all that stuff. But you listen to The House Whisper, and you sure do learn a lot of stuff. And the appraisal show sounds fascinating, too. They're all good. Uh, and if you miss them... You can go to housewhispershow.com and you can catch up on what you missed. Or you can just go to our website and you can uh, listen to the podcast of uh, this program all during the week at www.dbam.com. Hey, Jack, I hope you have a, a great new year. Well, thank you, Barry, and I'm, you know, looking forward to it. Um, you know, the real estate market has been very exciting. Uh, we were busy through the, the, the Christmas holidays. Well, tune in again next week for another edition of the House Whisperer Show with professional home inspector Jack Milne. And don't forget that uh, website. If you have any questions, you want to listen to previous programs, it's thehousewhisperershow.com. And this is Barry Reisman. Thanks for listening to WWDB. I'll light the fire while you place the flowers in the vase that you bought.